I got an inside look at 45 Drive's storage lab where they designed servers from the massive petabyte XL60 down to this cute little Stornator Junior that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Along with Wendell from Level 1 Techs, Techno Tim, and Jeff from Craft Computing, we got hands on with the brand new HL15 designed just for home labbers. I'm actually editing this video down in Texas where I just met Tom Lawrence in person at VidSummit. I even had him take this shot of me standing awkwardly in front of the VidSummit sign. I also met up with Network Chuck who just started setting up a Ceph cluster with five storinators. Now, to be completely transparent, 45 Drives paid for all my travel and lodging in Canada, but there was no other compensation and they don't even know I'm making this video. I just wanted to share my experience. For starters, travel was its own adventure. All's well that ends well, but almost all of us hit some delays, and seeing this fog on my first flight was a little bit disorienting in my groggy 6 a.m. brain. I probably just needed more caffeine. Flying up to Canada the first time was quite the experience, even if we hit a few snags, like a canceled flight and hours of delays. But I passed through Toronto and realized I've only been to Canada once before, and that was for LTX earlier this year. It was neat to see the eastern side of Canada, too. And I met up with Techno Tim in Toronto and roped him into helping me film my pigeon video. No doubt raising both of our social anxiety levels to new heights, but it was cool and the video turned out pretty well. And then 45 Drives actually chartered an airplane to get us into Sydney because there's only one flight a day from Toronto and we couldn't all make it. So that was my first time ever on a propeller plane flying over Canadian forests, so that was pretty cool. The night we got there, we had a quick dinner and I spotted this amazing Nixie watch, which now I'm jealous of and kinda want. But the next morning we visited 45 Drives HQ. There's a lot of references back to Sydney's history as a steel mill town. In fact, 45 Drives headquarters is right on the spot where the steel mill was located and they found one of the giant ladles underground while they were digging up the foundations. We took a quick group picture before starting a tour inside, and look at their fun little studio. I always wondered if those are actual Storinators or just faceplates, but they are in fact real. A Storinator, an Archivinator, and a Destroyinator. Redshirt Jeff probably needs one of those. There are some customized faceplates behind the set for some of the creators who get Storinators, uh, but next we went to my favorite spot, which was the lab. This is where they design, test, and repair all kinds of things. They have 3D printers going 24-7 making all kinds of parts and adapters, like these cool 2.5 to 3.5 inch adapters, which are now also on printables if you want to print your own. And they have an advanced thermal test chamber, or, well, I guess that might just be a barbecue grill. But being a storage company, they have so many hard drives. And NVMEs, SSDs, SATA, and SAS, basically all kinds of drives. And bins full of broken drives. Probably the loudest server was this new Stornado version that takes 2.5 inch drives with a cool toolless drive mechanism I call the toaster. It's 2U and it's fast and pretty loud. I got to talk to Josh, one of the designers, about the high speed PCB quirks that they had to deal with and the problems getting it consistent with hundreds of lanes of high speed NVMe storage. Speaking of speed, listen to those fans go. My goodness. But with that, they were getting 6 million IOPS at 22 gigabytes per second in one of the tests. So I guess the noise is good for something. They were also running multiple Ceph clusters for testing, including this one over here running in the open air, like a naked Storinator. Around the other side of the lab, they had laid out the entire history of 45 drives. Their first server was based on a storage server Protocase built for Backblaze. They took that design and kind of opened it up and started selling it to other people too. The first ones were a bit clunky. They had direct wire backplanes that had tons of cables going all over them. And over the years, they've optimized that quite a bit so the cabling is easier, repair is easier, and even upgrades to newer parts are a lot easier. Down towards the end, there's the quieter Q30 server, which is the direct ancestor to the new HL15 home lab oriented server. It's a neat server with a 15 drive backplane, no drive trays, and you can buy a few different configurations depending on how custom you want it to be. I'm supposed to be getting a chassis later this year, and if you want to see the nutty thing I'm going to do with it, well, make sure you're subscribed. Yes, it's going to involve a Raspberry Pi 5. The HL15 is outrageously expensive, or a good value, depending on your perspective. If you're a home labber used to buying used gear and know how to integrate a disk shelf into your storage, it's going to look pretty expensive. But if you want an all-in-one brand new storage chassis that can form the core of your home lab setup and be upgraded to the latest hardware in the future without swapping out the entire machine, the price isn't bad for what you get considering that this is brand new hardware. Anyway, right next to it was this cute little Storinator Junior which I helped Josh with a little bit since it incorporates a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. I love it and I got to hold it and that was probably my favorite part of this whole lab tour, getting to talk to Josh about it and I even got to see Techno Tim hold it like a baby. But we all left the lab and talked storage, open source, and even the inner workings of a hard drive. 
Tom Lawrence was remote since he had just broken his arm in a motorcycle accident, so it was nice to meet him here in Texas. It was so fun seeing everyone else there and being able to actually meet Jeff, Tim, and Wendell in kind of a low-stress environment. Whenever I've met other creators at a conference or something, it's just a lot of stress doing all the things that you do at those conferences, so you don't get to talk too much. But it was a lot different there. Alan from HD Store also brought some cool artifacts like this old mini USB drive and a see-through PCMCA hard disk, which was a fascinating little bit of retro tech. And later, Wendell pulled out this little box with a 10 gigabit USB-C plug. It's a tiny little four bay hard drive caddy, kind of a DAS, that you could pop onto a Nook or something for a quick DIY NAS. I didn't get the name of it, so if you know, post it down in the comments. We also had a meet and greet for people to visit from the local tech community, and that was really fun. They even printed out extra nameplates for our appearance, so that was a nice touch. For the grand finale, we took a tour of Protocase, where they actually manufacture everything, all the 45 drive servers, and a ton more too. The whole process of pulling out giant sheet metal sheets, to cutting it with giant laser cutting machines, and finishing the metal, it, it was really fascinating. They were making these little color sample pieces while we were there, but after they cut them out, they clean it, and then they bend metal for enclosures and parts, and they even do welding. These metal bending machines are just crazy. They have manual brakes and some automated brakes, and these presses let them bend metal so precisely that I was also glad to see that they had some safety features. Like even if this guy's hands are really close, they have some finger detection safeguards that stop the machine immediately before anything gets cut off. And one thing I could tell Doug, the founder, was proud of was the natural light here. He also runs an advanced glazing company that makes giant insulated glass panes. In the older part of the building, it was a bit darker, but as we went over into the newer part of the building, there was a ton of natural light, and you can really see the stark difference here. In that transition zone, they had the cleaning vats where you probably don't want to stick your hands unless you want to turn out like that guy in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's <laughs> one day, sure. Hey, boss. Then they have powder coating, and this area was fun. They have these chambers with giant filters, and every once in a while you hear this loud and each time the filter would get a reverse airflow bang to shake extra dust off the filter to keep it going longer. I'm glad we got to see some parts being powder coated. This isn't something you'd see in a typical small workshop or a home workshop, but they do a ton of finishing here, and often with custom parts, so they have these, these big setups. Once they finish all that, it's time for printing. They do anything from screen printing to full custom ink, like the front of my Storinator with the Red Shirt Jeff graphics. They have basically a giant digital ink printer that works with thick metal, so like an inkjet, but way more industrial scale. But they also have a bunch of parts set out drying and a lot of pretty colors. Finally, once the parts are finished, they have this massive packing machine that literally takes rolls of cardboard and preforms it into the exact size box they need. Very cool if you need a bunch of custom packing materials, though, I don't think I could ever justify one of those machines for my home lab. Finally, it all goes out for shipping, though they probably use FedEx a lot more than just this one truck that they have. The last day we got to explore Sydney a bit. We had dinner and probably a little too much on the drinks, but it was a lot of fun. And then we went out sailing on Doug's catamaran, but before we did that, we had to do a mini hot ones challenge. And let me tell you, I tried. I am not a spice guy. I don't do anything spicy. I literally tried one drip of the Apollo hot sauce, and I was thinking, oh, surely it's not so bad. The guests on the show don't usually have as big a problem as this with the da bomb. But no, that stuff is just insane. My tongue was burning for like an hour after that. It felt like somebody had stuck a butane torch on it. Meanwhile, Tim over here is just like, oh, I think I'm feeling something. It was so funny to see the contrast between him and Brett. Brett's face was red and he was over there like sneezing and cursing. Meanwhile, Tim's like, I feel something. A slight tingling of fingers. Tim was a champ, but I think I'd be sick if I had more than a drop of any of those spices. But anyway, the sailboat, I think I understand now. I, I've always been fascinated by sailing, especially the Samson Boat Company's restoration of the Tally Ho, a classic sailing yacht. That catamaran, it took a slight breeze and harnessed all the energy to push a boat full of like 20 people a few miles through the lake in like silence. And I always wondered, how do you steer a sailboat? It, it comes down to a ton of work basically with ropes and sails. And Doug and his little crew demonstrated some precision sailing when someone's hat blew off and they turned around and found it without any GPS and any motor at all. So that was a pretty fun adventure. But as the sun was setting, I just took in the quiet breeze and man, it is it was just really beautiful. What, what a great night for that. There's no engine noise, no nothing, just the sound of the water and the wind. It was very relaxing. But uh, before we headed back in, we actually dropped anchor and a few of the crazier folks on board decided to jump in and swim a bit. Let's watch takeoff. 
The drone can't capture the experience, but at least it gives some sense of scale here. And once everyone is back on board, I think I have to give Techno Tim the award not only for the spicy challenge, but also for the most mosquitoes zapped with that mosquito zapper. They were just everywhere biting us. And the next morning we came back to that boat for a live stream, which you can go check out on the 45 Drives channel. But here's a view of us from the live stream and then a view of the production setup on the boat. And that night I walked along the shore and had some ice cream on the dock, just enjoying the sights and sounds of Cape Breton. It, it's a pretty beautiful place. I mean, I've heard of Sydney, Nova Scotia, but this was my first time ever visiting. The environment there is beautiful. The people, they're so nice. You know, it's, it's a meme that Canadians are like nice to a fault, but it's actually true. Like everyone, everyone there, anytime there's an opportunity to help, they would help. But the only thing I didn't enjoy too much was the airport where they only had two flights a day and the flight that we were on was canceled. It's kind of a remote place, which, you know, it's part of its charm, but that also meant we had to spend a bonus day there, which wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I did want to get home. So I learned a ton about hard drives and the mechanics and physics of the internals of a hard drive. I mean, they're old tech, but just like modern cars, hard drives have bleeding edge tech. Like there's this new thing called Hammer, H-A-M-R. They can store data on an atomic scale by literally vaporizing a tiny bit of the hard drive platter. It's insane. And even older tech like helium in hard drives is still pretty crazy. Like the 20 terabyte drives in the petabyte pie, those drives don't actually have screws on them. Did you ever notice that? If they used screws, they'd need a gasket between the two metal surfaces. But if you fill a hard drive with helium, the helium would leak out of any conventional gasket. So what do they do? They literally weld every hard drive shut to trap the helium inside. And why helium? Well, it's lighter than air for sure, but the helium molecules actually create ideal flow inside the drive since they're so small, meaning there's no turbulence that screws up the heads that read and write data on the micron scale. Anyway, there was so much we learned, and I'm excited to get an HL15 unit to test and build inside soon. But right now I'm really focused on finishing up my studio, and hopefully I'll have another update video on that soon. But uh, until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.